see your names to see that you are here as we seek the Lord in prayer. I pray that God will answer your prayers and answer my prayers during these 10 days of prayer and during these 14 days of praying and fasting. This is the second day of the 10 days of prayer. And the title of, of the lesson that we have been given by the church is the danger of being busy for God. Not being busy away from the things of God, but being busy doing the things of God. Now, this is designed to address those of us who serve God. And by the way, all of us should serve God. Sometimes we are too busy serving God and in zeal we forget to rest. And that is not right and that is not biblical. And the lesson today has been given to us to address those people who are so zealous for God that they forget to rest, they forget to come aside, they forget to go back to family, they think that just going on and on and on and on is good. Overworking, ladies and gentlemen, overworking for God, leave alone for money or for education, overworking for God is foolishness, for God himself does not approve it. Overworking for God is foolishness because the God you are overworking for does not approve that overworking. And so today, Ladies and gentlemen, we have redesigned this message a little bit just to make it a little more clearer by asking this question. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't need a break. Yet, he takes a break. You and me need a break more, but God who doesn't need a break takes a break. Why can't you and me who are weak and frail take a break? Shouldn't that challenge us to think endlessly that busyness is not a sign of importance and commit commitment? Just being too busy without resting is not a sign that you are an important person. It's not a sign that you are committed to anything. That's why I came to challenge you today and ask, if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Do you know that the, the current problems we are facing of mental health, depression, and people suffering many things, they can't bear the pressures of life, is because we are not taking a break. Yet God, who does not need a break, takes a break. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested. God rested. It is he, God, who rested from all his work. God, who doesn't need a break, took a break. God, who doesn't need to rest, rested. That's why I came to ask you, friends, if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? The Bible says that when God created the first day, he just said, let there be light. And there was light. That doesn't sound like he had done so much, but that's how he closed day one. <laughs> that looks like a lazy one. Let there be light. That's all, that's all for today. And you are gone, God. Yeah, he's taking a break. He takes a break. I'll be back tomorrow to cre create the sky. And he's not putting up pillars. He just says, let the water separate so that they, they, there is a, a firmament. Let the water down and water up separate. And he looks at it and says, I think this is okay. And he takes a break. I just came to ask you good people, if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? If God can say, I think that's enough for today, why can't you take a break? You know, 
I have been sometimes visiting places here and there where you go for a preaching assignment. You preach in the morning and you preach in the afternoon. When the sermon ends, you are told, can you continue preaching? Please continue preaching because we want to be here until the sun sets. Because if, 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 we, if we stop here, we may be tempted to break the Sabbath. So just keep preaching. Say anything. Teach anything, pastor. People don't want to take a break. Just keep going. Keep going. Sometimes as preachers, we fail God's people. We preach on and on and on. We preach the elders are sleeping, the mothers are sleeping, the children sleep and wake up. Everyone is yawning and tired and we are hammering one more of us. And we keep saying, in finishing, in finishing. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? The longest sermon that was preached in the Bible ended up with someone falling from the, 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 the top floor down and he died. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Day one, he took a break. Day two, he took a break. Day three, he took a break. And after he had finished his work, the Bible records that God chose to rest. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Sometimes we struggle between extremes of people who take too much break. They are forever in a break. When will you work? But there are now those who work too much. When will you take a break? It is time we challenge ourselves to take a break. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? In Psalm 127 verse 2, you know, there's a very interesting verse there, and I don't know why, why it was just planted there. Sometimes it looks out of place compared to what is around it, and it says, in vain you rise up early, <laughs> and in vain you stay up late. You wake up very early in the morning, and you are the last one to sleep, toiling for food to eat. And then he says, but God grants sleep to those he loves. Look at what he gives those he loves sleep. At least they can have a snooze and enjoy to sleep. It is in vain to overwork. You are busy very early and busy very late and those God loves are busy dozing off, sleeping and snoring loud and happy, waking up feeling so fresh and you sleep stressed, wake up stressed. Which one do you prefer? God rewards people with the rest. Sleep a good night rest. If God is giving sleep to those he loves and you are working the whole night, do you belong to this God? No, I'm just asking. Because the Bible says those he loves, he grants sleep, but you are working the whole night. Which God do you belong to? Isn't it time you review the kind of God you are dealing with? Because the God we love is granting sleep. But you are sleepless, restless, overworking, up the whole night doing something. Which God do you belong to? You hardworking character. Which God do you belong to? So I came to challenge you in the name of Jesus that if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? In Mark chapter 6, verse 30, 31, and 32, we are given these in the lesson today for the 10 days of, of prayer. It says, the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. They were reporting that we have really worked. <laughs> verse 31, then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. They were busy, busy, they were busy. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not have even a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. I know you have missed the point there. They did not rest after the people stopped coming and going. As they were so busy, Jesus said, let's stop it. I know we are very busy, but let's stop it. Let's go aside and get some rest. And so, verse 32 says, they went by themselves in a boat to a solitary place, to some resort somewhere. Jesus practically taught that any business can be suspended for the sake of rest. That's Jesus. And you are there, you are told to plan a church seminar or a church meeting, and everything is back to back. 5.30 exercise, 6 breakfast, 
seven morning devotion, eight this, nine that, ten that, eleven, three minutes break, twelve, one, two, three to six in the evening. Which God do you worship? Because the Jesus in the Bible will not attend your seminar that is packed that way. It is not productive when people are seated the whole day, topic after topic, even schools where people learn most important things, they take a break. They don't pack things, but look at seminars we attend. Look at workshops we attend, particularly within the church. It is back to back, back to back, back to back. And the people attending the seminar are people who don't sit in school regularly. These are people who are engaged in other businesses and what have you. And so most likely what happens is nobody learns anything. Can't people relax, just learn one or two things and enjoy being around? Jesus did not pull them aside to rest after work. He pulled them aside in the heat of the work when even a minute to grab lunch was impossible. And Jesus says, it is exactly at this point that I want you to rest. When it is so busy, when the queue of those who need your services is long and the people are crying for your help, that's when I need you to take a break. It's not just all about work. It's God's work. God himself says, let's take a break. Jesus, who is God, took a break and told the disciples, while they were doing divine business of serving people, he said, let's take a break. What about you? Do you take a break while you are serving God? If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? That's the question I came to ask you, friends, as I plan to get out of here and do other things. I just came to ask you, friends, if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Do you think you become very important when you are busy one after another, one after another, one after another, too busy? If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Let me tell you, friends, you are unwell if you think rest is wasting time. If you always imagine that any rest time must be plugged with something to do, then you are unwell. You are unwell if you think occupying people constantly throughout is safeguarding them from evil. Yet the overworking itself is evil, even overworking for God. It is time we learn to take a break. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Ladies and gentlemen, the lesson today reads as follows. I'm going to read a passage, a big passage from the lesson today that is given in that material for 10 days of prayer. It says, busyness is king in our world. It, you know, it's king. It's a big thing to be busy. Modern society and high pressure consumerism have drilled one belief into us. The busier we are, the more respected we become. No wonder we even introduced great people among us and say, he's a very busy man. And we want to thank God he has found the time to be with us. He's very busy. And everyone says, wow. So those of us who are not busy are not important. So every important person is a very busy person. He's a very busy person. Business, I continue reading, has become an indicator of our diligence and eagerness to do good and get ahead. But, but while we are busy making a living, we have forgotten to live and enjoy life which is tragic, perhaps even more tragic is the subtle danger that many committed followers of Christ have adopted a mindset of busyness in their work for God, that they have also said, no, I need to be very busy. We often do it for the best possible reasons. We know that time is short. We want to accomplish most for God. And therefore, we strive to be busy. We want to be good stewards of our time and talents. It feels good to be busy for God. And sometimes we are tempted to think that God will reward our busyness for him, not knowing that salvation is free. You will not be saved for being very busy. Only to discover that in our busyness for God, we have lost our living connection with our Redeemer. That's what the lesson says. We are doing things out of habit, not in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, think about 
for that. That you are so busy, but it's just habit. It's not the power of the Holy Spirit. It's just your behavior. That's your personality. You like being very busy. You are not holier. You are not better. You may not even be having the Holy Spirit. Get some rest. And then the lesson continues to say, and the busier we get, the more we deem ourselves in line with God's purpose. Busy becomes the new norm. And so the lesson says, we are so busy glorifying how busy we are that we miss the moments in life that really matter. Busyness crushes our spiritual vitality. Being too busy for God that you cease to be spiritual. Hurry is the enemy of any love relationship. Ah, you didn't hear that. This is the last sentence I'll read from our lesson today. Hurry, hurrying, rushing is the enemy of any love relationship, especially our relationship with the living God of Scripture. Love demands the attention of, of unhurried time. Guess what, friends? I just came to tell you, if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? If you are serving God, do your best and take a break. I mean, retire. When time to retire comes. It's no harm. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Rest. It's not a sign of commitment if you stick there until you are finished. Take a break. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Let me say this, friends. Avoid repeatedly saying you are busy. It could be a sign that you are disorganized. Avoid repeatedly saying you are busy. It could be a sign that you think there is importance in being busy. Avoid repeatedly saying you are busy. It could be a sign that you are avoiding people and other responsibilities by using those words. If you really care about people, you create time for them. You know, somebody said, there are people who talk to you in their free time. And there are people who free their time to talk to you. That's the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, this business of saying I'm busy, I'm busy, is no longer something to be glorified. You can still achieve a lot without rubbing it on anyone that you are busy. If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Have worship that has a break and allows for rest. Have seminars that has breaks and allows for rest. When you call people to come together for a meeting, let them have opportunity to rest. Plan to sleep long and proper. Plan to go on holiday. Plan to hang out with your loved ones. Plan to avoid overcrowding your partner. Study hard but have breaks. I I just came to tell you, friends, if God takes a break, why can't you take a break? If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? If God takes a break, why can't you take a break? Our dear Heavenly Father, forgive us for thinking that saying I'm busy is a very important thing and that we are very important. Forgive us for foolishly thinking that being so busy in the vineyard is a sign that we are very committed to you. Help us to do our best and also take a break. Heal those of us who have been affected by overworking. Heal relationships that have been affected by overworking. And help us to do our best. Bless us today in the name of Jesus. Amen.